Hey, what's up guys? Today I wanted to show you how you can render in Karma XPU. And I want to show you all the little tweaks you might need to know or you might be wondering uh, when you try it. Uh, I won't be going over each and every possibility or detail, but over some um, things that commonly get asked. So yeah, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna just quickly create something. Uh, just create a geo and I'm gonna use the trampoline HDA from the last video uh, which I made. You can check it out uh, in the last video. Uh, you can also download it uh, there. Uh, I, I put it for free on Gumroad. But yeah, you'll get a trampoline and you can create tweaks and parameters and so on. And if I put the null down, wired in, let's call that out trampoline and I also want to unpack that for now just so we get uh, access to the point velocity all right uh, as you can see we have a bunch of attributes uh, attributes on here so we have the velocity the point velocity uh, we have a name which we won't really need but it's there and then the important thing for karma XPU is the groups as you can see down here so cloth cuff uh, jump pad leg ring and spring which all represent these little things and we're gonna use those to texture this thing so uh, as well as the uvs you can see so let's go to uh, the stage level you can either go to the stage level here or you can create uh, a lot net so lotnet drop that down and you can go in there it's up to you uh i prefer i prefer to go to the stage uh, just because i feel it's a bit cleaner but it's up to you so we're going to import our geometry using a sub import and here you can select the geometry so we go in here uh, in the geo node, uh, geo node and we select the out trampoline click accept and we already have the trampoline now, if you want to texture it using the groups, you also want to bring in the groups. So you go to import data, then go to subset groups. And here you select the groups you want to import. So we want to import these. And that's it. Like that. Simple uh, up to this point. And now we're also going to call this trampoline. And we're good. So let's drop down some other basic uh, basic things we're going to need. So we're going to use a dome light and select the HDRI. So just go to dome light and you can select an HDRI wherever you save them. So I'm going to use the uh, Kira Dome just like that. And we're going to use a merge to merge all these things we have in a scene. And we're going to use a camera like this, plug that into a merge as well. And if we select the merge, you'll also already see the uh, dome light into effect in the viewport. And if we don't want to see that in the background, we're just gonna press D and then you can go to background and untick this one. And we're also gonna swap that to dark so we can see a bit better. So let's turn off this one as well. And uh, this, uh, this is just a viewport view. Now. To render this, we need the Karma, uh, Karma render settings, plug them down uh, or put them down and you'll get these two nodes. Uh, in this one, you're going to have all your settings for rendering, like your resolution, uh, which camera you want to use, the output location, as well as the file type. You just change the ending to select a different file type, the limits of the sampling, and you can select the XPU variant if you want to use the GPU which I do, uh, and you can also select the AOVs here. So uh, I also suggest if you go to the use the render rop, here you can select, uh, here you can start the render either to mplay, which is just a viewport monitor, or you can select to disk. Uh, you can also render to disk in the background to still have access to Houdini meanwhile, and you can select which frame you want to render, which is currently set to this frame, 
but you can also set it to a specific range to uh, set the spe specific range where you want to render. You can set a frame interval um, or increment, but uh, we're going to just leave that at one. And yeah, that's basically all you're going to need. You can, or I suggest taking this one, render all frames with a single process because it will change, um, it will, uh, how do I explain it? If you render normally, each frame, there will be a USD file created for your whole scene, which is then rendered. If you say, uh, tick render all frames with a single process, it will create one USD file for the whole frame range and then render it, which is in most cases a lot faster and if more efficient, I guess. But yeah, that's all the simple things you're going to need. Then next, if you want to uh, want to have motion blur, we need, uh, so let me just select that one really quick and select the camera. Let's go out here and if we want motion blur in our scene, we don't just tick it here. So you can tick it in the render settings, which is uh, here. But you can activate it using a geometry render geometry settings. Plug that out of the geometry. Uh, you can also set a primitive if you plug it somewhere else. And then you can enable motion blur as well as set the type of motion blur, which is usually velocity motion blur. Um, yeah, it's as simple as that. Now we have motion blur, we have uh, objects imported, we have a camera, we have a light, we have our render settings. Uh, the only thing that is missing, I guess, is the materials, which you're going to use the material library for, which you plug down after your geometry and you can dive in. And here you can create materials, depending on which render you're going to use, CPU or XPU, you need to watch out for a few things. So XPU doesn't take VEX uh, shaders, so you can't use VEX shaders if you want to use the XPU render. And if you want to import, uh, export the USD scene with the materials, uh, you should use material x materials so only use the material x shaders so material x shader builder uh, which you can use it's completely fine and if you render in houdini itself using karma xpu you can use a karma material builder which just has a has a few features uh, internal to houdini but most uh, mostly it's also material x based so this one works best if you render in Houdini. So uh, in here, you can you have your standard surface material, which for most things you're gonna use. Uh, it has all the all the inputs you're familiar with. But if in case you wanna texture volume, there's a uh, you can use a Karma uniform volume material, but you can also use a, a Karma pyro shader. Pyro material, uh, you can use baked cloud materials. You have a few presets here you can choose from, a cloud material as well. Um, but in this case, we all only have a hard material, so that will be fine. In case you want to create an ocean, which most people do, I suggest checking out that video. But if you create an ocean up here using the shell tool, we can go to uh, Lop Oceans. And we click and create a small ocean just for fun. I'm not gonna in go into that because I explained that in another video. Uh, you can check that out. But if you look at the shader here, oh, my bad. If you look at the shader here, you'll see there's a few materials linked for that, which already have uh, a shader for the ocean. You can also go to the material. So if you go there, uh, you can copy these materials. They work for Karma XPU. But I really suggest only doing that if you're kind of familiar with it, because there's a complex setup in uh, in there, which you might need to tweak if you're going to use it somewhere else. But yeah, just uh, for, for your information, I guess. So let's go out there as well uh, again and delete that. But let's continue. Let's just create, uh, let's call this trampoline. 
Uh, and let's dive in there. And we're just going to make it red so we can see what we're doing in the viewport. So I'm not going to go too deep into shading. That's another another story. Uh, one thing though, if you want to use the display color from um, geometry, from the ob uh, object context, you can import that using a geometry property value here. And it's called, it's not called CD here. It's called display color like this. And it's case sensitive. So you uh, need to type it like this. And it's a vector uh, or, or a color, I guess. You can import that and use that for shading. You can also import other attributes using this, um, just in case you're wondering how you can, can use them. Uh, yeah. Besides that, you can also use a color. I, I think geometry color. It's it's basically the same, directly imported. Uh, yeah. Now let's leave it at that because we're just gonna use the uh, material for sh uh, example purposes. So we have the library. Now we're gonna get them, or we want them on the surface of the material uh, or the, the geometry. We can use either a material assign material, which we could plug in here, like this, where you can set the primitive you want to use. Or let me swap to the Solaris context as well here. So now that we're in the uh, Solaris context, I also swap to the Karma XP or rendering, uh, and. Let me also turn on this one again. You'll see a bunch of different things, which first of all, this layout uh, asset galleries, where you can also select your own USD galleries, which if you want, I can make a video about how you can create your own asset galleries uh, with pre-configured USD assets. And besides that, we also have the scene graph here, which if you use it a bunch, you'll get comfortable with it. Uh, you'll find basically everything you have in your scene here, you'll find in the scene graph. And depending on which node you select, it will show the graph from there. So if we go to here, we'll see all of it. But if we go to the top node, you'll see we only have the one thing. And uh, at that, we can open the trampoline. So we have all the, all the single parts, but my problem is I don't want to texture each of these parts or assign a material to each of the parts uh, um, alone. So that will take forever, which is why I'm going to use the groups we imported, if you remember, using the subset groups. And how can you do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You can either, like I said, use the assigned material in here where you define uh, what you want to use in here. So we put that in here and then you select the material, which is here, put it in the material path. And as you can see, it's assigned. Uh, for the jump pad, it's pretty simple because we only have one, but let's go for something else. Like, mm, let me go for the cloth. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> there it is. You can see it's only this one, which we, no, which is a problem for us because we don't want to do like, I think it's 34 different uh, material signs. So we're going to use a little trick and just make that path relative using two stars. And then we have assigned it to each of the class. And the other variant, which is a bit more new, is the material linker. So we're going to get rid of this one and type material linker, which is this one and put it in here. And now if we go uh, or if we select the material linker, you'll see the materials on the left and the geometry on the right. And how that works is uh, if you go to the material, you can select it. And let me select something we want here, like the spring. We drag and drop it on the spring and you'll see a rule opens up here or a new rule gets created. Using this rule, we can double tap on that uh, you see the pattern which the material is assigned. Right now it's an absolute path, so it's only assigned to this specific spring. Uh, spring. And again, if we re replace this piece with two stars, which basically makes it relative. So um, the stars replace whatever uh, piece it is. So 
they all basically get selected and then only the ones that have a spring uh, inside them which is the subset group will be the ones that the material is assigned to so we click oh you can also see them he uh, here by the way which is showing the result and then you can click accept and you'll see it's all assigned to these uh, i find that i you often use the assigned material still but i think this one is a lot more um is a lot better for to have an overview, uh, overview so i like this one a lot more because you can select the material uh in this case we only have one and then you'll see all the rules so you'll see all that it's assigned to whilst the assigned material is gets pretty chaotic once you have a bunch of materials in there you can scroll and you'll have to look for the materials here you'll see which material is selected you'll see all the uh, geometry which the material is assigned to easy like that so we can also create a bunch more rules so uh, if we also want to assign it to the cloth i guess we can select that and do the same thing again And uh, if you, when you remember this, these small things are the cloth pieces. So yeah, that's that. That's how you can render using Karma XPU. I know I didn't show all the uh, little details, but I wanted to keep this pretty short and easily understandable for most of people. But yeah, that's basically all the uh, simple things you're gonna need to start rendering in Karma XPU is to so is the sub import to import your geometry uh, is to know how you can uh, assign materials to specific parts of geometry using subset groups you can light the scene using an HDRI in the dome light and you can use a camera just wired into the graph using a merge node um, and the merge node you get how nodes work I guess if you're using Houdini so you can just select the uh, note where everything is um, combined to final uh, to view all of your or your whole scene and yeah as you can see it's also live rendering so the material is just that but yeah i can also show you the rendering process so right now we also only have this resolution we can render that to m play but i want only render one frame so i click render to m play it only took two seconds because I didn't assign materials to all of, uh, all of it and materials are really basic. But you get the point. So it will open this view and you got to be careful here because rendering to end play doesn't save the image. It just creates the viewport monitor and uh, renders it in there. So you can export from there. But if you want to render to disk, you got to use uh, or you should use uh, render to disk. And like I said, I suggest turning on render all frames with a single process if that works for you because that will speed up things most of the time and make it a bit more efficient uh, if you want to render if you want to uh, monitor your process while rendering because it's not going to show the render view when you render to disk you're uh, going to need to go to monitor and turn on and play monitor which will show uh, the rendering while it's rendered to disk with the viewport monitor of the mplay window. And that's that. That's basically all you're gonna need to start rendering in Houtini Karma XPU. So if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Uh, I'm always happy to uh, hear what you guys have to say and uh, I try to take my time to answer them. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.